I've done the math and over the past eight years of creating videos, I've featured over 1,000 different apps on the channel. But what probably won't surprise you is that hardly any of those 1,000 apps are still installed on my phone. But there are, of course, exceptions to that. And so welcome to 20 Android apps that I cannot live without. And just to clarify, I know I made a similar video last year, but this list is filled with 20 unique apps that were not featured in that video. And to kick off the list today, we have an app called Darkinator, which I use on literally every Android phone that I own. And that's because it lets me set up two different wallpapers that will automatically switch whenever the system theme changes. This means I can have a bright and beautifully vibrant wallpaper in the day, and then a darker one that doesn't blind me at night. And there are stacks of apps that do a similar thing, but this one is by far the easiest and quickest to set up, and it works flawlessly. And then to go along with customization, anytime I'm using a phone that doesn't play nicely with third-party launches, like phones running MIUI, for example, then to set up my all-time favorite home screen icon layout, I actually use an app called AppBar. This app's main purpose is that it lets you create scrollable widgets filled with your favorite apps, which you can then customize as much as you like. But then because of this widgets column setting, you can also use it to essentially fake a wider horizontal grid size for your phone's launcher, which pretty much unlocks any icon layout that you can think of. And then using this next app on the list called Blank Icon, I can then add four instances of this Blank Icon app placed on both sides of my icon configuration to create this really clean and minimal icon layout with negative space on either side. I also sometimes use Blank Icon to create blank home screens, but either way, despite how ridiculous an app like this sounds, surprisingly, I use it all the time. But for phones that do play nicely with third-party launchers, then my absolute number one go-to option at the moment is Nova Launcher, and in particular, Nova Launcher version 8. I actually made an in-depth 20-minute video covering this new version of Nova Launcher not too long ago, which I'll link up in the cards. But in short, thanks to some updates with Android 12 and Android 13, as well as some changes on the Nova Launcher side of things, this is the first third-party launcher that doesn't feel like a hot mess when using it in conjunction with navigation gestures. Okay, moving away from customization now, and despite most versions of Android coming with a built-in screen recorder nowadays, I actually still find myself using this third-party screen recorder app instead. Now, I don't actually think this specific version is available on the Play Store anymore, so I'll include a link to where you can download it via APK Mirror below. But alongside having a way bigger range of customizations, the fact that it's a third-party app means I can actually hide its notification. And this results in much cleaner screen recordings, and it's actually how I'm able to achieve shots like the one you're seeing right now. But then you might be wondering how I also hide the screen casting icon for these shots, and that's actually using an app called System UI Tuner. This is a super powerful app that does not require root access, only A to B permissions, but along with a huge range of system-based customizations that it unlocks, like I said, I mainly use it to hide various system icons. So on top of the screen casting icon, I also use it to hide the clock and the battery and network indicator icons, which helps to keep my phones looking a heck of a lot cleaner whenever I'm filming these app related videos. And then another sort of system hack I find myself using from time to time that lets me play videos with the screen off is by using an app called Black Screen. Now, I am a YouTube premium user, so I'm not using it for YouTube, but there are some apps like this one in particular called KO, where I just wanna to listen to a sports game while I'm doing something like mowing the lawns, let's say, without having to keep my phone's display on and activate it. And so using black screen means I can. Then there's Flash Dim. And look, I am as baffled as anyone that aside from One UI, there is still no user facing way on Android phones to change the intensity of your phone's torch. But thankfully with Android 13 and devices that support the feature, we can at least use third party apps to do so. And Flash Dim is so far the only option. And so whenever I'm using a Pixel phone, which is pretty often, then this is one of the very first apps that I install. I wish more phones supported this feature because I seriously miss being able to use this app whenever I'm not using a Pixel phone. 
In a similar vein, I'm still super surprised that, again, aside from Samsung phones running One UI, that more phones don't support natively scanning documents and converting them into PDFs directly from the camera app. And so V Flat is an app I've been using for a while now that unlocks this feature for non-Samsung phones. And it does so really, really well. I genuinely use this app all the time. And one of the oldest apps on the list today that I still install on every single Android phone I use is called SMS Backup and Restore. As someone who transfers back and forth between several devices throughout the year, I seriously rely on this app to make sure that my SMS chat history gets maintained across each phone. I cannot wait for the day that SMS chats reliably sync across phones, similar to apps like Telegram or dare I say it, Facebook Messenger. But until that becomes a feature, SMS backup and restore will continue to be a mainstay on every Android phone that I use. Now, before we press on, I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank today's video sponsor, RoboForm. So if you haven't heard of it, RoboForm is actually the number one ranked password manager that has been around for over 20 years now with a complete no breach history in that time. And I've got to say, using this tool makes my life a whole lot simpler. It not only safely stores my passwords for me, but it also quickly logs me into any account with just the click or tap of a single button. RoboForm also allows me to generate passwords that are incredibly strong and secure, and I can even use it to save and then quickly fill in credit card information. And my favorite part is that RoboForm syncs my information across all devices and applications I use. So any Android phone that I'm using, the iPhones I use whenever I'm reviewing them, my Windows editing machine, my Mac laptop, as well as every app installed on any of these devices. And this means I literally never have to worry about forgetting a password again. So to level up your online security, sign up for RoboForm everywhere today. And if you use the link in the description, you'll get a very handy 30% off the upgraded plans. All right, from there, let's move on to some apps that I use all the time in my work life. The first of which is an app called Monitor Plus. And as someone who films with Sony mirrorless cameras pretty much every single day, this app has been a game changer for controlling my cameras wirelessly. And even though it costs 30 bucks to unlock touch to focus tracking, that feature alone has been worth every single penny. Then there's Moises, and you might be wondering how on earth I use an AI-based music app for work, and well, let me explain. So I pride myself in making sure the music tracks I use in each of my videos are really engaging, and I actually use two platforms to source royalty-free tracks, Epidemic Sound and Artlist. Now with Artlist, you can only download flattened audio files, which makes the tracks a little bit harder to work with. Whereas what makes Epidemic sound so great is that it actually lets me download isolated instrument stems for all of their tracks, which in turn allows me to really hone the flow of their songs so that they fit the videos I'm using them in. But I just recently started using Moises to essentially do the same thing, but with the Artlist songs. Now it does this using AI, so the end quality isn't quite as high as it is compared to the original flattened tracks, but the flexibility that it offers has been well worth the trade-off. Another app I use all the time for work is actually one of my very own applications, Shelf. And ever since we added the feature that enables users to add their own app recommendations, this has now actually become the first place that I go to whenever I'm researching apps to include in my top Android app series. And the final work-related app that I use is another one of my own apps, which is called Palette. And similar to Shelf, Palette is where I go to find beautiful home screen setups that I then recreate in the various customization-based videos on the channel. But then moving into more non-work-related apps now, and a huge change I made recently was switching my main podcasting app of choice from Pocket Casts to a brand new player called Snipped. Not only does it offer all of the same features I loved about Pocket Casts, but it does so in a nicer design and with a bunch of other cool features to go with as well. And then as someone with three kids, it probably won't surprise you to hear that I also use this mouse time app a heck of a lot as well. Not only is it just a really well-designed timer app in general, but thanks to that fun design, as I said, it tends to be a hit with kids. So anytime we're doing some sort of sharing related activity, this app is perfect for making sure that everyone is happy to take their turn. And even though it still hasn't added cross-device sync support yet, there is just something about Listy that keeps me coming back to it. 
For those who haven't heard of it, Listy is a beautifully minimal application that allows you to keep a track of anything using lists. And what makes it great is that whenever you're adding anything to a list, it will then populate additional information like book covers or movie posters. And so this has actually been my go-to app to keep a track of the books I've read throughout the year, which reminds me, I need to get back into reading again. Okay, Minutia is an app that when I first featured it, I'll be honest, I didn't think I'd keep using it, but for some reason, the concept has me hooked. The whole idea is that at one specific time, every single day, every user of the app is notified to capture a photo of whatever is in front of them unfiltered, with the overarching idea being that over the course of 1,440 days to be precise, you'll eventually capture every single minute across a 24 hour period. And as you can see, compared to when I first featured the app, I now have way more captured moments. So it'll be super cool to see this all filled up at the end of the process. Second to last is the only root only app on this list and it's called Fox Magisk Module Manager. It basically acts as a central hub for finding and installing Magisk modules. And given that this was a feature dropped by the main Magisk Manager app some time ago now, it's almost a must have app for any of the phones I do have root access unlocked with, which admittedly isn't every phone I use anymore, but there are definitely still a bunch. And so finally, as mentioned at the top, despite testing a heck of a lot of apps every single month, I'd say close to 95% of them get uninstalled once I'm finished filming whichever video they were for. And so of course, I need a quick way to uninstall all of them. And the app I do that with is called AppDrop, which is actually another one of my own applications. But at the end of filming a video, I just run through this app list, select any of the apps I'm wanting to uninstall, then tap uninstall. That'll then trigger the uninstall process for each and every app. And trust me when I say that this saves me an unearthly amount of time every single month. But there you have it, 20 Android apps that get installed pretty much straight away on nearly every single Android phone that I use. If you enjoyed the video, then a sub to the channel would be greatly appreciated. But that's it, thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.